Okay, everybody, welcome back. So in this short video, I'm going to actually walk us through creating your own samples. I mean, this is kind of the video that y'all have been looking for, uh, I can tell. And I have a lot of people that reach out to me and ask me, uh, what's the best way to create um, your own, you know, sounds that you use on the DTX and how to make them sound as professional as possible. So I'm actually going to walk you through that today. Um, I will say that there, there is a bit of a learning curve in terms of editing the sounds themselves, but when it comes to actually uploading a sound, it's actually very easy. So I'm going to probably spend the majority of this video talking about how you can find sounds, how you can import them into a, um, audio uh, editing software, uh, which don't be alarmed, don't be overwhelmed. I'm gonna walk through all of that stuff today um, and, how, and how it can best help you. Okay, so one of the easiest and fastest ways that I grab samples to use is actually from YouTube. Now I'm gonna put a little disclaimer here and say that you need to be very careful about what you grab from the internet because some of the stuff that you grab may be public domain where it's like, you know, anyone is able to use it without consequence. And then there is some stuff out there that is uh, copyrighted that you legally do not have access to to take off the internet so you need to be very careful about that there if you google online uh like sound samples so if i just use google i can look up uh free sound samples and you can find various websites where you can download sound effects uh you know that are in the public domain and that you're able to use without consequence um, using stuff like YouTube, you need to be very careful because some, again, some of the stuff you're able to use and some not. So here's an example of one that I had used previously on a performance of um, Elf, which is a Christmas show. And, and again, I had mentioned in a previous video that the conductor at the time had asked me, he looked over at me in the middle of rehearsal and he said, hey, um, on that little device that you have, is there any way that you could uh, maybe program uh, like a horse uh, neighing sound or something like that. And I had one of two choices. I could either say, nope, this is this is all I got. Or choice two, which is the choice I recommend to you all, is to try to figure out how to meet those musical demands. Um, to our, I told the director, I will work on it. I'll have something for you by the next rehearsal. And so um, the, the, the conductor really appreciated that. He's like, yeah, whatever you can come up with, it will be fantastic. I just would really like something like right at this musical moment. And so I said, okay, I'll do my best. And so I went looking online for some free horse samples. Uh, here's, here's the example I'll put it for you guys. <laughs> so even just that little snippet, like of course this is three minutes of horse sounds, but I really just need one. So what you could do is just kind of listen through this entire recording to find the best sound. Let's just listen for a couple seconds to see what we hear. <laughs> Okay, so there's a couple of different horse sounds in here that we could use. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is to extract this track. So the way I'm gonna do that, and again, you need to be very careful about doing this because for legal purposes, uh, you need to be aware of like what, what you're able to take and what you're not. So this, because it says it's, uh, you know, reuse allowed, like I'm able to reuse this sample. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. So what I can do is just go, YouTube, or you can just download a YouTube video. Okay, so I can just use just a random website that I find. I can take the URL, download that. Convert. Okay, and then it, the, the video is not so important. It's more about the audio. So I can just take this three minute horse track and then it turns it into an MP4. Okay, here's, here's the step that I want you to, to really take note of, okay? Um, when it comes to editing the audio to be ready to um, input it into the DTX, you need to use a program that's called a digital audio workstation. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge lecture about what about how to, you know, record audio and you know, all that crazy stuff. I'm really just going to boil it down to 
um, specifically for using it with the DTX um, and how we can grab samples from the internet to, um, to edit them down for what we need. And so what you can do is you can download any digital audio workstation of your choice. The one that works best for a lot of folks is a free program called Audacity, which you can download from the internet for free. Um, Audacity free. Okay, so again, Audacity is a free digital audio workstation which allows you to edit audio and um, distribute it um, however you need. So this, this is gonna be really important because the DTX only accepts a uh, 16-bit wave sound files, which is, don't worry about what that means for right now. Just know that for now, you need a digital audio workstation to make this step happen. So if you'd like a free one, you can go ahead and use this. I'm gonna do a separate Audacity video because I'm not an Audacity Pro. I use another program called Ableton, which I'll make a little short Ableton video because I'm quicker at doing it with this program that I'm used to. And I'll make a separate video that's just for Audacity for those folks that want to go the free route, which is all good. You know, whatever, whatever works for you. The one thing I will say about this is that you get what you pay for, folks. And that's something that I always tell my students that, I mean, I get it. Being a student, you want to go the free route. I get it. But if you're looking for something that a lot more professionals will use uh, in the real working world, I recommend a more popular program like Pro Tools or you know, Logic or Ableton or something like that. I personally use Ableton, but I know a lot of folks will use other programs. Um, Audacity is the one I recommend for those that are just starting out and they just want something free that will do uh, this specific task. If I was recording an entire album, I probably wouldn't use this program because it's, it's, it's limiting in a number of ways. And, um, you know, again, I'll say this one more time, you get what you pay for. So if you, if you want to go the free route, great. There are other routes that you can go that will offer uh, just more flexibility for what you're trying to do. So in this case, I'm just gonna quickly do this in Ableton so that way y'all can see. So I'm gonna drag that horse uh, video that I saw and drag it into Ableton. And so when I drag the video into Ableton, it looks like this to where if I, if I look at this uh, video, it's gonna be the horse again. <laughs> And so what I'm gonna do is if I look at this audio file, I can look, I can stretch it out and take a look at all these different individual horse sounds. So I'll, let's just look at the very first one where I have, if, I, if you look at what I'm doing in this program, I'm just basically stretching the audio so that way I can see exactly where um, the beginning of the sound starts. And so if I, if I look at this audio recording, there's some dead space in here, and then you'll see where the audio actually kind of happens. And so um, again, I'm not gonna, this is not gonna be a crazy huge lecture on you know, using a digital audio workstation and recording music and editing and all that, but to, to boil down to the basic, basic um, tasks that you'll need to complete is one, you'll need to find what sound you actually want to use. Step two, you need to download that sound either from YouTube or from the internet. Step three is that you'll need to import that sound or audio into a digital audio workstation that can be Audacity or any other program like Ableton. And then, and then uh, the last step is you'll need, or one of the last steps is you'll need to edit it down to a sample um, to where it is just that audio by itself. There is no extra sound such as this beginning, um, this beginning emptiness. So what I can do is I can, I can go to my edit tool and then you can look up where you can, uh, where you can split something or splice something. So this specific example, I can use the split tool, which is for me on my Mac, it's command E. So I can find basically where the sound starts and then, and then uh, use the tool to splice that and then cut whatever else I don't need. Now, since I'm just gonna be working with this individual horse sound, I don't need all this extra material. So what I can do is just find basically where the horse sound ends. 
and then do another splice. Now what I have in front of me is just the horse sound that I was working with before. Okay. Now what it's going to take on your end as the person who's editing this is it's going to take a lot of listening to where you're going to listen to this sample over and over again. And let's say, let's say, um, I cut incorrectly so I can kind of back up, re re splice it if I need to. or delete what you don't need and you can adjust as needed to where to where the beginning of the sound is is where i want um the beginning the beginning of the the sound to take place so the reason why this is important is let's say i didn't uh, let's say i did not edit out all of this dead space so when i hit my pad number one instead of the horse sound happening right on the downbeat like this where it happens like right when the wave happens. If I, if I download it like this, if I hit the pad, you're gonna hear about two or three seconds of silence before the horse uh, starts neighing. And so I wanna make sure that right when I hit the pad, the horse starts neighing. So it's like right on the downbeat. And this, this is gonna take a little bit of trial and error because again, um, this does take a little bit of uh, knowledge prior to accomplishing this, but um, if you can if you can practice with this on your own, this is really going to open up a huge gateway for you all uh, to be able to create your own samples. And this is stuff that you can do for free. So let's say that's 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 where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, render this and download it to where I can I can use this uh, on the DTX. Now, when I'm rendering this to be able to use it in the DTX, one important step that I need to do is to make sure that it is uh, a 16-bit uh, depth. So what you can do is you can check that it's a wave file. There are different file types, but specifically for um, the DTX, you need to use wave and make sure that the bit depth is 16, okay? Don't worry so much about what all this stuff means. Just know that whenever you're exporting a specific sound file that you want to use in the DTX, it needs to be 16-bit wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I really don't need the video for this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this horse. And I can just save that to my desktop. Okay, so as you can see, how it pops up on my computer is horse.wave. Okay, remember, when you're importing any sound at all into the DTX, it needs to be a WAV file. It will not work if it's an MP3 or MP4 file. As you noticed, when I first had this file, it was an MP4. Okay, if I try to upload this MP4 into the DTX, it will not work. The only way to do it is to reconfigure it to be a WAV file. Okay, now I'm gonna make another video uh, dealing with Audacity. That way, all of you that are trying to do this, uh, the free route, which is great, um, I will have a video that explains all of that as well. Okay, so the next step would be to take this horse.wave file and put that either on a USB stick or um, that's probably the best route to go is to use a USB stick. That way I can directly import that into the DTX and assign it to a specific pad, which I will talk about in the next video. So hopefully this helps. Thanks, y'all.